Hello, welcome to Watbox TV. Me Cool KM2 arrived a week ago and I've been testing it extensively. Today we've got an unboxing, a review and 20 questions more or less. Um, 20 questions that haven't been answered in other videos that I've seen on the KM2. Without further ado, let's power on! Very quickly before we dive in, uh, a few things just to bear in mind. Um, there's 20 questions that are going to pop up throughout the video and I will try my best to answer them. Uh, if there are any questions you have and I don't answer them, please comment down below. Also check the pinned comment to see if I've already answered your questions because others may have commented. Should I make any mistakes in the presentation, I will also add those details to the pinned comment. Finally, at the end, I'll give you a verdict on whether I think it's worth it or whether other boxes might be more suitable for you. If you like this kind of video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you. Let's bash on. So, question. Did you buy it or did Mikul give it to you? Well, disclaimer, I bought it. I paid good money for it. There you go, I bought it online, as you can see, and I got a discount on it. It cost me $65.70, and you can get a discount using the code down below in the description, if you so wish. So just to repeat, I haven't been paid to make this video. I haven't been given the device. All opinions are mine. Uh, you, your mileage may vary. So question, are you going to show us a boring unboxing? Well, I'll try and make it as quick as possible. So here we go, five second unboxing. Boom, two, three, four, five. What's in the box? Here we go. There's the adapter, 12 volt, one amp, a cable, I'll talk about that in a moment, manuals, the box, the remote. Let's take a quick look at the box and the remote. Let's take a look firstly at the remote. As you can see, it's pretty nicely laid out. This is the G10 or Google reference remote with four dedicated access buttons. At the top, we've got a power button, input button, you switch between inputs on your television. We've got a bookmarks. We've got the Google Assistant and direct access to settings, which is very useful standard d-pad below that we've got a back button home button and a tv button i'm not sure exactly what that does we've got a volume control plus and minus mute button these i believe will turn will go up and down the channels if you're using a tv app you've got the four dedicated buttons youtube netflix prime video and google play From the side you can see it's nicely rounded shape there fits nicely in the hand and the infrared button at the top it takes two AAA batteries let's have a look at the box so on the front got a plastic cover take that off it's got a TF micro SD card slot USB 3 USB 2 Moving around to the back, we've got a power button on and off with a 12 volt, one amp input, LAN, Ethernet, Ethernet, tomato, tomato, 100 megabytes, not a gigabit, HDMI port, 2.1, AV input, SPDIF for your optical input, and there's an input there for any infrared uh, devices, uh, capture devices that you might have to plug in. Moving around, we've got nothing on the other side. And on the bottom there, we've got two strip pads that raise it off the off the surface that it sits on to give it a bit of cooling. As you notice, there is no ventilation grill. Okay. Let's quickly run through some of the specs from the Mikul website. It has an Amlogic S905X2B processor. It's got two gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Oh, and I noticed someone did say it was DDR3, but it is in fact DDR4. And eight gigabytes of eMMC storage. 
HDMI 2.1 port and it's got HDCP 2.3 optical port um, it's got an Ethernet port notice it runs on 12 volts 1 amp most of the dongles run on 5 volts audio codex for Dolby, Dolby Digital and Dolby Digital Plus and MS-12 Dolby Atmos pass-through HDR10+, Plus, HDR and HLG DRM is Widevine L1 which is what is necessary for Netflix 4K playback it's Android TV based on Q, in other words Android TV 10 standard launcher upgrade via USB or over the air HDMI CAC and certifications include Google Android TV Netflix Amazon Prime Video MS 12 including DD and DD plus HDMI 2.1 CAC HDCP 2.3 etc etc okay so take, let's take a quick look under the hood and system in the system section there at the top look at that the manufacturer Skyworth Digital make a note of that name we'll be coming back to that later on brand is me cool of course it's an Amlogic processor and it's an Amlogic R4 core ARM Cortex A53 at 1800 megahertz coming down we've got the display um, notice in the display we've got it's a Mali G31 GPU it's running Android 10 okay so we go into settings now and we come down to device preferences and about and there we can confirm it's the KM2 it is running Android version 10 and in the advanced options we can see that it's got the Netflix ESN for 4k playback so why has it taken me cool so long to come up with a Netflix 4k certified device well, let's have a look at um, a question that was asked over in the Me Cool Facebook group page. When is when is going to be supporting Netflix HD or 4K? To which the Me Cool official replied, Netflix has a really strict business strategy for business partners. One important aspect is the annual sales of the company, and you should know it is really huge then let's also have a look at this vlog article uh, talking about the hailstorm device scaling program to enable Netflix support on Amlogic and high silicon TV boxes there are several manufacturers that are partners the hailstorm partners include SE, SEI Robotics who make the TiVo stream 4k ASCII who make the Dynalink 4k device dongle and Skyworth who as you saw earlier are the OEM for the me cool device so there are certain devices that have got pre-certification and so are being rebadged by other sellers do you know of any other reason that would explain the delay of me cool getting a 4k Netflix device out comment down below so let's confirm that we do indeed have 4k on Netflix let's click into Netflix and as you can see on the more info let's go into there and you can see 4k HDR 5.1 up the top right up the top there and now if your 4k TV is not an HDR um, TV you'll probably just see this ultra HD 4k question did your home screen update well this is more or less how it uh, came out of the box it updated with the Google Assistant at the top left and sit it settings icon and time on on top right and on the left hand side the icons for apps Netflix and Prime Video on their respective rows so when I updated it it changed to something like this basically the difference being it inserted this row between the top row and the first row of the apps um, including uh, the suggestions now here's the twist I'm in Spain this is what I got from what I can see uh, a youtuber in the UK got something like this 
tell me in the comments down below what you've got if you've already seen it or which one you prefer question does the me cool km2 have a power button well yes indeed it does on the left hand side at the back there I mentioned it earlier on just push it in to power it on push it in again and it will pop out and power off a question from my good friend rich um, the cable how long is the cable and is it 2.1 well the cable once it's unraveled comes out to 1 meter 50 centimeters tip to tip that's 59 inches or one inch shorter than six foot whether it's 2.1 or not I am unable to confirm at the moment but have a look at this this is the what's written on the cable high speed HDMI trademark cable with Ethernet hey eh? cable with Ethernet it's an HDMI cord I'm confused Chromecast does it work on the KM2 well here we go there's my cell phone let's get a video going and let's cast it press the cast button KM2 connecting and there you go there's the video being cast okay that works question Google Assistant work okay well actually yes it works very well um, you only need to press it once you don't need to hold, keep it held down so click on it let's try it um, tell me a joke prepare to chuckle or groan the broom was late for our meeting today it said it over swept yeah that's definitely a groaner um, let's come back out of there let's try another one um, click what's the weather like in Hawaii today today in Honolulu Hawaii it will be partly cloudy with a forecast high of 27 and a low of 22 right now it's 23 degrees and mostly cloudy yeah my settings are on centigrade not Fahrenheit question how the remote works how's the speeds opening closing apps well here we go as you can click 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 if I just hold it down zoom. yep fine all the way down to the bottom all the way up to the top yep seems to work fine opening an app let's see open Netflix okay I have had Netflix open and it was super quick however let's go back out and cl force close Netflix just to see what it's like from cold so to speak um, we'll force stop it and then come back and go down and open it again let's see how quickly it how quickly it opens this time boom couple of seconds Jump. okay this part depends on your um, internet connection okay and in okay so if we come out again there's a let's go back in again straight in question the special access buttons YouTube Netflix Prime Video Google Play can they be remapped well I tried with button remapper and I was unable to do it I think they I suspect they must be um, hard-coded in the remote firmware shame question that remote looks great can it be paired with other devices well yes it can but and there's a but on this one um, let's just show you what the remote is called it's called the G10 remote G10 and now I'm going to switch I'm going to pair that with my Chromecast with Google TV let's switch over to the Chromecast with Google TV and uh, in there um, I'm using it now so using the if we go across to settings you can see that I've got it paired I'm using this at the moment come down to it's a bit jumpy because this is a different capture card 
and remotes and accessories as you can see I've got the G10 there paired and that's what I'm using so if I press the home button I home button works back button works what doesn't work are the four quick access buttons the YouTube Netflix Prime Video and Google Play buttons do not work and cannot be remapped either so not recommended so someone asked me about CEC HDMI settings whether you can control your TV from the remote control so yes you can but there is a small issue there if we go into set up remote buttons you've got various options there add device add a TV receiver or soundbar and then all the others are on auto yes they do work when I click on them I can change the I can put the volume up and down I can turn the power off I can turn the, the TV goes off with it the input button I can switch between inputs on the TV however if and I've tried this device in two different TVs a 1080 Samsung and a 4k Xiaomi TV and when I go to add device and add a TV something went wrong and I get this on both the Samsung 1080 and also the uh, Xiaomi 4k TV pain in the butt question that remote's not going to stay clean and snow white is it well here's a picture of it as it came out of the box and two days later after some hefty testing with myself and the kids this is what it looks like as you can see that back button has been hammered has been hit a lot it's now pretty brown question is the Google Play Store full Google Play Store well it is in fact the Android TV OS Play Store which means that all the apps on it are optimized for viewing on a or for you viewing and navigating on a TV screen rather than on a tablet or on a phone so it's the same Play Store that's found on the Nvidia Shield TV, TiVo Stream 4K, Dynalink, Chromecast with Google TV, etc. etc. Can we transfer data write files to external storage? That's another question that was asked. So let's go into a file manager, explore, and on the left hand pane we've got um, a file, let's call it that one, the Joker, that we're going to right to the download uh, folder on my EU that is on a USB drive that's stuck in next external storage so that's the download folder and we're going to find that Joker file and write it to that so long press there on explore press clock copy and OK and immediately we get failed writing to file we retry it just doesn't like it so that's a fail so one of the questions someone asked was can you uh, put an SD card in a TF card in and make it internal storage so let's pop it in and see what happens checking the SD card we're gonna go and have a look at it in settings come down to device preferences come down to uh, storage and the one I've just added there was that one I'm going to click on that I'm going to erase and format as device storage internal storage okay you will lose everything that you've got on there if you And once done, you'll get a message saying move data to SanDisk SD card. I'm going to say, yep, OK, move now. This could take a while, especially if you've already did, uh, downloaded a lot of stuff and installed a lot of stuff on your disk. Anyway, it's done. And as you can see, um, it, that drive, that SD card has now moved up to the device storage section. Can you play games on it? What's it like? Well, let's go up into uh, the remotes and accessories and see. you can see here that I've got uh, two 
uh, game controllers connected via Bluetooth. I've got a third connected via USB cable. And let's have a look at a bit of game play. So as you can see, Beach Buggy Racing running smoothly with three players. Graphics are fine. Bit of Asphalt 9. Again, all working smoothly. So gaming gets uh, definitely, yes, works fine. Question, can you use a third party launcher? Someone told me that you can't. Well, yes you can. Um, here is Sideload Channel Launcher 3, the very best of the best. Um, you can forget Wolf, I'll explain very briefly why this is the best, let's go in there. This can have uh, animated GIFs as backgrounds, even on the tiles you can have animated GIFs as you can see. And another nice thing about this one is that you can export rows or channels to your home screen. So if we go back to the home screen, there it is at the top. So each of those is a mini app drawer which is well cool. So you have tools, etc, etc. So, yes, you can use a third party launcher. Question, is there audio pass through? Well, if you have a look in settings and device preferences and come all the way down to advanced options, audio output, there it is at the bottom. It says enable Dolby 7.1 channel pass through. I don't know if that'll do 5.1 channel pass through. I imagine it probably would. Just enable it there. He's also got uh, Dolby DRC mode, which uh, helps the Dol Dolby dynamic range control. That's useful for those uh, movies where you've got quiet bits and then suddenly there's a big crash and it deafens you. It can smooth off those loud parts. And likewise, it can also bring up the quieter parts. Has it got auto frame rate matching? So let's. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it anywhere, so I'm going to say no. In advanced options, there was nothing in the display section at all. Screen res resolution does not mention anything like that. So the verdict, the good points, the bad points. Would I buy it? Well, I did. Should you buy it? So let's look at the pros. It streams well in 4K, Netflix, YouTube. It does what it's meant to do. It plays games very well. It's well priced and excellent value, especially when you consider that uh, the $50 range of um, dongles don't have USB ports and don't have Ethernet ports. This has those and more. The cons. Well, that writing to external storage is a problem for some. I think it's something that's been seen on other Android 10 Android TV 10 boxes. The other cons, the buttons can't be remapped. Not much else wrong with it, really. Overall, it's a thumbs up. Should you buy it? Well, if you're in the market for one, for a streamer at about that price range, you have uh, other alternatives like the Chromecast with Google TV. Costs a little less, though it doesn't come with any ports, any USB ports or Ethernet port. Same goes for the TiVo Stream 4K. Another option would be the Mikul KD1 stick, which comes with 16 gigabytes of storage, if storage is a thing for you. But that doesn't come with 4K Netflix, if that's a thing for you. So really, is it worth you buying it? It really depends on what you need or want. Phew, well, that has been a marathon. Don't know what I've missed, you tell me down in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I've said that before, I'll say it again. And finally, thank you for being here. Catch you in the next one. Toodle pip.